minutes with Gary V, gang. All right, sit back, relax, enjoy the flight. This is the Limits Podcast. First meeting today. Is it? Um, Gary. I mean, not for first meeting, not first work. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I had calls this morning. Hell yeah. Uh, picture this, Gary. Okay. Okay. For those listening and not watching, I am showing a picture of Gary to Gary. On the left, yes. you and I meet at a Milwaukee airport 2017. I'm drowning in debt. Yes. I have copious amounts of debt. 60K student loan debt. Uh, this right around the time I'm graduating, you are like the acquisition of Pure Wow is like loosely taking mm-hmm. place at this moment in time. Two flash two years later, bingo bango, flip life paid off the student debt all thanks to trash talk. Uh, so this is a little little I little you this. know little Thank little you. gift for you. I little, like it. Uh, I'll cherish it. You know, yeah. I will get that on the shelf. Yeah, wherever you'd like, you know? But uh, just a huge thank you, first off, for even taking the time to do this. Happy to do it. And that, no joke, when I met you in 2017, briefly, we were like going through like TSA at the same time. Uh, That was like a turning point in my life uh, to to go hard at paying off the student loans with with the Flip Life. Um, And all thanks to- You can't imagine how that feels. Yeah, it's uh well, it's crazy. I have old school Irish, working class parents. Yes, and my dad's like, you could probably just hang out at your job another hour or two, you know, and not go hard on the side hustle. And I was like, Mm-mm-mm. there's a guy over there, mm-hmm. ten thousand yards, who's flipping mugs, yep. you know, like there is a way out of this. Yes, I, sitch. Yeah, exactly. And there that, always is. Totally. And sometimes it's work ethic. Right. And sometimes it's meditation yeah and sometimes it's the gym yeah and sometimes it's a new relationship and sometimes it's a drastic maneuver and moving to washington state yeah. in the woods and sometimes it's just changing the three channels on tv or five people you follow on social to two different channels and three right. different people on social i just don't understand how people don't realize that tens if not hundreds of millions of people a year change their circumstances from dark to light thus rendering the excuses and the non-action not true totally you can sit and say people got lucky people are nepo babies you know da, 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 da. or you can understand there are billions of people over the last decades who've been in worse situations than you, that got to happier places than you, and you can start to realize you can do that too. Right, right. As you progress, that was a a freaking bomb right there. It was a real bar. Yeah. I'm trying to really make sure that Dustin clips it properly. Yeah, that is. We have that in all, honestly, that's some real fucking talk. And like, it's, it's time to like, enough of the nonsense, enough of the blame, enough of the dwelling. It's just not a productive energy use. Totally. And it would have been very easy in that scenario. Not that Pops was steering you wrong. He was actually coming from a good place. He's like, hey, this might have worked for me or worked for me and my brothers or uncle or my dad. Like that's, that was his perspective. Right. You had a different perspective and you took, you took initiative. I'll never forget sitting down at DCU with my mother. And they're like, yeah, Kev, you'll pay uh, 285 a month for 10 years, and then you'll be debt-free. And I was As like, if that was like a great thing. As if that was yeah. like, I remember getting like flushed with yeah. like. Blood. Yeah, I was yeah. like. And you probably turned really red when you. Oh, like, yeah, I'm I see, all Irish. I see, so I'm I like, see it. Yeah. So I'm sitting there, I'm like, <laughs> not even barely knowing how interest rates even work. Of course. You know? And I'm like, whoa, this is. And then, yeah, it literally paid three grand a month every month for two years straight. What was the first item that you flipped that really made you say, wait a minute, this fucking dude Gary isn't joking? It, it, no joke, started as a couch. It was the couch. It was our neighbor gave us a couch, (laughs) sitting in our basement for years. It's this, it literally, it yeah. looks like her, it was, it was all denim. It was a denim, a denim jean couch. couch. Wait a minute, you sold a rare denim, you probably sold it too cheap. Under. By the way, I think you got ripped off. I, I, I know you've made money, I, I, but I have I, a weird I, feeling that somebody's sitting right now telling a story of oh, how yeah. they ripped off a yes. young Irishman yeah. for this rare <laughs> denim couch. You're in they, Charlestown right now <laughs> sitting on a denim couch. I will hunt you down, okay? Yeah, you got it for free? Got it for free, yep. 180 bucks. Craigslist? Uh, face of marketplace. Yeah. And yeah. 
Uh, and then I was hooked. That was it. That was, cause then I was like. You're like, wait the fuck. I was making, uh, working at a tool company <laughs> yeah. out of college, yeah. 45,000 a year. Yeah. And then I was like, I just made, I go, well, hourly, what do yeah, I gotta make to do, to do that? Math, I'm yeah. like 280 it, or well, 180 what was, enough. What was the big hit in that first three, six months? Like a different thing with like high volume or something like that. Uh, vacuums. Vacuums. He it's heavy. On, so, so then I, I was like, okay, there's not always a surplus of furniture. So you were really going hard Facebook marketplace. Cause I'm, I'm, I started uh, at a young, like you had like the lemonade stands. Yeah. It, uh, there's a golf course near us that's got a water hole. And mm -hmm. I, as a kid, as a literally six yeah. years, my mom's got the home videos yeah. of me with like denim again, mushroom yeah. cut. Yeah. I would go in and get these golf balls, scrub them up at six, and then go sit in the tee box and yeah. sell them three for a buck. Yeah, of course. And I didn't know what, I didn't know yeah. if that was entrepreneurship. Yeah, yeah. I just liked that little yeah. old man who did a little, you know, mm -hmm. rub down on the hair. Yep. You know, and you just made a dollar yeah. out of just knee in the weeds. Yes. So I was like, ooh, there's something. So it happened to be couches for me that got me out of the debt, but it was like. Like uh, when you're like friends and acquaintances and content online, like couches. Yeah. You know, like yeah. people think that must be crazy, right? Insane, ludicrous. Yeah. And then it was, and then it scaled to like out of my parents' garage, got a storage unit, of got course. a 15 storage unit, and then built it, built it, built it. But it was always big physical items, Facebook Marketplace, more than eBay? E more than eBay, yeah. yeah. The vacuums were eBay. Were they? I could ship them. How much would it, how much does it cost uh, they to were, ship out? They were Orkin vacuum. vacuums. They weighed, uh, I think it was 15 pounds. You could sell, I would get them on, there's a liquidation site for, if you go into a Home Depot and sit like in the paint department, mm -hmm. you can jump on their computers and there's a whole clearance. It shows you what's on clearance, what's about to drop to clearance. Love. And there's these Orkin vacuums that were like 10 bucks. And you could sell them for how much? eBay was 300. Wow. So I'm down, I'm, profit is 290, a little bit of shipping. Now of we're like, make call 200 a vacuum. Why, you were shipping for free? I, no, I would charge for, uh, you could set like a flat rate Yep. And then uh, I would go media mail. And I'd be like, no, this is a mm -hmm. four feet by two feet. This is all CDs, yeah, officer. Of what mm -hmm. do you mean? Yeah. That is media mail, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, but for me, it was, it was mainly couches. Like, that was the, wow. the drive. But um, And then what happened? Uh, so then I started posting about it. So that, so that oddly enough, this yeah. is where, like, I started. So now, like, flashback to that picture is, like, on the right is, like, somewhat recent. It was, like, yes, a couple months ago. But in, in actuality, it was two years later after 2017. Debt free. Vlog the whole thing, post it every day. There's a now TikTok comes out. Flash forward to like we're like season one of COVID, like Tiger mm -hmm. King's hot. We all have mm -hmm. no toilet paper. Mm -hmm. That era. I remember. Uh, I'm now posting those flip videos again, but on TikTok. And there was one that like blew up. It went to like two million in like a couple hours. And you know, when, you know, where a video really goes. It, it gets in different pockets of the internet. Of course, of course. So now it's leaving my like following. It's going in like the, the hate direction. Of course. And I turned out, I was like, should I erase this? I was like, I'm getting like, this is unethical. Yeah, How course. could someone do this? Yeah. Like you should be donated, all this crazy stuff. And uh, people are really good at you should. To, oh, totally. People are really, yeah, the 100%. world has become remarkable at should instead of doing what they should be doing. Right. The only person right. that, you should be deploying should on is yourself. Right. But we love to deploy should on everyone else. Yeah. People have gotten really good at telling everybody else what they should be doing and not telling themselves what they should be doing. I'll tell you something. What you should be doing is focusing on yourself instead of spending all your time mm. on the internet telling other people what you should be doing. Yes. Yes. Do you how know how that? often? It's insane how crazy it is to deploy judgment and negativity on other people at scale. Right. What a wild life. Right. What a wild life. Totally. I really have compassion and empathy and sympathy for those people. Yeah. I really do. I, I have no anger towards them. Zero. Right. Zero. Even when it's slung at me. Right. Zero. That, I, I really understand, but I really don't want that for them. Right. Totally. I don't think they understand the cocoon they're in. Totally. The fucking hamster wheel of fucking darkness that yeah. that is. Your line of, uh, Love him or hate him. Michael Jordan never left hate comments on the internet. Yeah. Is like the ultimate. Yeah, I really believe that. You know? I just don't think, I don't think people that, you know, this is my big issue with people that are happy is they're not loud enough. Like the world's backwards mm. right now. The people that are most unhappy are spending all their time trying to tear everyone else down. Right. Or razz them or zing them or should them. And then the people that are happy are too silent. Right. And not 
deploying love towards others uh, enough. That's, that's exactly that's, right. I feel like that's what we're feeling. And hate's almost the cool, trendy thing to do. Of course, you trolling. Know? Right. They rebranded it. Yeah. As a cool thing. Yeah. I'm exactly. just trolling. I'm like, cool. You're just wasting your time and yeah. negativity. Hundred percent. I mean, I, look, I love a good raz. You know, <laughs> I love a good joke. I love stand up comedy. Yeah. Yeah. But like genuinely allocating a lot of your time with the hope that it will hurt someone else's feelings is like a really, yeah. really bad strategy. We went to VCon mm -hmm. and saw the Schultz. Yes. Stand -up. That is, but people have to understand like <laughs> that is the, like, the, by the way, if you're not at VCon 2024, you're a bozo, okay? Bozo. Feel free to run ads behind uh, that, uh, right? August 8th, the 11th, yeah. Los Angeles. But um, that was the- No, but a lot of, a lot of people are like, because uh, for context, Andrew Schultz, the incredible comedian, razzed me good. And, Hilarious. And like a lot of people, and I had a lot of like high school and college friends there who like thought it was the best, of course. And then just other people who don't know me, they're like, yo. And I was like, yo, what? I'm like, the ultimate is to get into a place where <laughs> one of the great contemporary comedians of the time has got you in their mouth. 100%. That's the best. And plus, if you can't laugh at yourself, then you're finished. Do you, yeah. Do you think we're pivoting? I, I look at life as like a, you know, a pendulum. I do. I feel like we're at least from what I'm seeing in real life and on the internet, it feels like we're swinging back to thicker skin. We can start yeah. to yeah. No, I think not yes. walk on thin ice as That's much right. as like even 18 months ago, That's 11 not, months ago. Yeah, I think I think people people got you know I think when you cancel everything, you cancel nothing. Right. And I think what you're seeing is people saying like, okay, like we can't live our lives. Like if you have good intent and you reference a saying that's been around for 80 years right. and now that saying has been recalibrated, as long as you didn't have intent to hurt someone, right. I think that we should give people grace to, you know, try to figure out what's up. Right, and totally. And so, um, yeah, I do, I do sense that people are a little like, fuck this shit. Yeah. Um, but I also feel like people are on tilt as well. And honestly, good news. If you if you're if you're feeling optimistic, I got really fun news for you. Twenty twenty four is gonna be very contentious. Yeah. You know, election years in this country right now are not gonna go super well. Right. Right. So I think you know I'm I'm already mentally preparing for next year and trying to be empathetic and understanding because I do think people are gonna struggle. Right. Which totally. is too bad. You know, Struggle really, from an economic standpoint or like to, a... You know what? Taking this all the way back to how we got here, it goes back to people having... You telling a viral video of how you figured out an ar opportunity in arbitrage that was incredibly fair. You bought something, you sold something, you didn't steal anything. Right. You right. didn't make anybody buy anything. You didn't, you know... It knock wasn't on, snake you didn't oil. Knock, you didn't knock on someone's home and like shove a $300 vacuum into right. their face and then punch them and then take their wallet and take right. the three. Like right. you, you, you know, I mean, do you know how many of those people that said you should have uh, go to work and barely are working right now behind their screen and taking someone's totally. money that's paying them and not working? Like there's so much. Yeah. That, like if you want to, like let's put all 8 billion people on stage and analyze everything they do. Right. You, you can say you should have to everyone about a million things. Right, totally. A million. Yeah. A million. Yeah, I agree. There's not a human on earth that is not walking around that doesn't have six, seven, ten, eleven shortcomings. Some of them are meaningful shortcomings. Right, right. Some are neglecting their their children. Some are talking horribly to their spouses. Some people are literally. We had an employee recently who had like seven jobs while he was oh, working wow. here because it was remote. Like Taking side hustle to the next a, level, huh? Yeah. There's a million things that go on. Yeah. That one can. And by the way. There's another bigger thing. This goes to the real point. People have different frameworks of what they think is wrong and right. Right. 100%. I think it's wrong to give eighth place trophies. I think it makes kids incredibly insecure and makes them fear losing. Totally. Many parents, great friends of mine, completely disagree with me, and I I respect that. Right. Our complete inability, complete and utter inability to respect other people's opinions that don't match yours and to have civility when they don't match yours has completely evaporated. Yeah. As it, the audacity of humans today, as if your opinion of how the world should be is the only one and right. 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 That is obnoxious. 100%. And even more so, obnoxious that everyone has some sort of following now to voice their opinion and now feel even more entitled to, you know. Yeah, I, I just don't understand. Like, cool, you have 17,000 followers, mazel tov, right. what now? Right. Like, I don't get it. 100%. Like, as if. 
only 113 of them are yeah. actually paying attention to you anyway. Right. Exactly. A lot of people are like, I got 4 million followers. I'm like, you got 8,000. I'm always talking about <laughs> conversion rates with this one yeah, coming from the sales world. Of course. Hundred people see it. Two people actually read of it. Course. Maybe one buys. I know you've, you've hinted at it in the past. Is there ever a world where you kind of collectively boil everything down at Vayner and just kind of peacefully go about doing the flip life full time? Like, is there a, I know it's been in talks. No, no, no. I, I love that you've heard that from me because I don't say it often. There is often, and I'll try to put a number on it. There are 12 to 25 times a year, which is up from <laughs> never yep. a decade ago. So that is the interesting data point there. There's 12 to 25 times a year where I think about piecing out. Mm. Like just either doing one of two things, completely stop making content and run my businesses in the dark. Right. Vayner X, be friends or completely piecing out for real, for real, selling everything in garage selling full time. Right. Or completely piecing out, selling everything and opening up like some weird destination in some rural place like the middle of Pennsylvania yeah. that people can come to and schedule time and bang out an hour of like mental conversation. Like, like, like what I, I love to do, like, around why, and, yeah. why I'm already, 10 minutes late on this. Yeah. Like, I love talking to people. And so, yeah, exactly. Like, like just never shave again right. yeah. and just look crazy. <laughs> and so, you know, I'm fascinated by those feelings in my body. Yeah, I'm fascinated that that wasn't even a consideration a decade ago. And does that mean that I'm building more, more momentum towards actually doing that? There's, and I'm a very where there's smoke, there's fire. Like mm. even as I'm talking right now, I'm like, fuck, these are gonna be the clips that people look at in 16 years when I peace. Right, right. If I peace. And then there's, you know, and by the way, the 12 to 25 times where I go into that mind place, usually within five minutes or definitely within that same day before I go to sleep, I'm like, nah. I yeah, yeah. You know, like, you know what I mean? <laughs> but, but. Everyone at Vayner's just on edge. Just I, you know, look, I mean, I've made myself very clear to Vayner. I've told Vayner every time I address the company, I'm like, if I sell Vayner or if I peace out, everybody quit. Right. <laughs> Talk about burning the boats, huh? Yeah. I just, I just don't, I just don't think it could be the same. I, I don't think most people are at Vayner for many other reasons than besides the very unique thing that I've built. Right. They just have too many other options. Right. And I think the unique thing I've built goes back to some of the themes of this conversation, which is you can be professionally successful. You can build a real business. You can do things in your life. Right. And that doesn't compromise you being a nice person. Totally. This demonization of effort or success or go getting it or selling. It's really, um, it's a lazy point of view. Totally. It's yeah. a lazy, I don't know what else to say. Yeah. You know, like, like everybody you've ever admired if you're the most anti-business, the nonprofits, the politicians, the thought leaders, the authors that you admire that gave you the point of view of like, they all put in the work. Right, totally, 100%. You know, so yeah. I don't understand that. Yeah, yeah. If you were to, so it's interesting, we're at a weird point now in our lives where we're 28 years old, uh, full-time social media, built a small team, camera crew, yep. agents, the whole night. Joey. Yep, Joey the Great. Um, what would you do now? You're, you're starting to, you know, make some dollars, hard earned dollars. I get where where are you putting as a 28 year old where, cause you hear all this, the smoke of like stocks, real estate. And if you love stocks, great. And if you love real estate, great. But where would you put your, your, the, your the, dollars? The place where you would like to put it. Yeah. Here's what I mean by that. You can just sit on it. Right. You like could. the dragon and trick, just you, you a just gold could. cave. I mean, you could you could put it into CDs and you can make some interest. Right, money's worth money now, which is rare. Right, like you can actually make money on your money. Yeah, you know, we had zero percent interest. We don't have that anymore. So if you have a hundred thousand bucks and you want to make six, seven, five, seven points on it, you can. That's real money. Right, that interest starts to add up. So that's interesting. That's if you have nothing that you're passionate about. If you want to, you know, look. I think the stock market has been a good play. Um, and I think it will continue to be as long as America's around, which is why it's a safe bet. So that could be interesting. You know, real estate is work. Totally. You know, the stock market, if you believe in certain stocks or you get a 
money manager and somebody diversifies it. You know, it's really in essence, you know, this thing people talk about passive income. Right. At some level, that's passive. You've made a decision. But if you buy a piece of real estate, I promise you, that's people love to think it's easy. It's not. Like, 100%. especially if you rent to someone's house, what if they yeah. take a shit on the floor? You gotta right. clean it up. Like, like real <laughs> shit. Like, so that's, you know, I think real estate is great, but has its own kind of thing. Obviously, you can go into a real estate fund and not be the management of the building. Look, you know, for me at 28, if you're capable of earning, I'm a big fan of higher risk behavior mm. um, to learn. Right. You know, so early stage investing. Right. You know, that's what changed the course of my career. Totally. I didn't have a lot of money when I invested yeah. in Facebook and Twitter. Right. But I had conviction. And so I would say whether you're buying a painting, uh, whether you're buying a Michael Jordan rookie card because you referenced him, whether you're buying a single family home, whether you're buying a bunch of shares of Netflix, I would tell you and every other 28 year old that's got a couple dollars, have conviction around it. Yeah. Invest in something you know and like. It's awesome Both. hearing you, yeah. Know and like. Right. If I'm you, I might just, I might just put the money into paying 22 year old use to scale how you got here. Mm. What about putting the money into employees right. to flip? Yeah, right. What about creating a business where you share it 50-50 with the 22-year-olds that are listening to you who don't have options, who say, fuck it, I'll, where do you live? In, uh, I'm in Boston. Great, I'll move to, you know, to the Northeast, Rhode Island, Boston, yep. whatever, Maine, New Hampshire, however you decide to build it. Yep. And I'll team up with this dude. And wait, you're paying me a salary and you're giving me 50% yeah, of the profits? Right. So I think sometimes people That's interesting. get away from what got them there. Totally. Look what I decided to do. I decided to start a company around how I actually built my dad's business. Right. A marketing company. So I think doubling down on your strengths. Yeah. All right, I got to go. I love it. Yes, so thank you so much, Brother, Gary. Pleasure. Pleasure, man. Thank Thanks you for having so me much. on. Hell yeah.